In the headlines, TUC on why government should not blame unemployment and economic challenges on COVID-19 and the Ukraine invasion by Russia. Be ready for better days ahead as the economy is bouncing back, government assures. KNUST SRC sets aside 50,000 Ghana cities to save needy students from deferring courses. Electric wire used as drying line electrocutes couple at Congo in the Upper East region. And referee Kenny Paddy banned for the rest of the football season for airing in the award of a penalty to Kumasi Asante Kotoko against Hearts of Folk. Welcome to the News in Brief on Graphic Online. The Trades Union Congress has asked the government not to blame the high rate of unemployment, poor remuneration and economic challenges on the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war. It said all those problems were already prevalent in the country long before these challenges started, and that was a well-known fact. Addressing members of the TUC at an organized Labour Pre-May Day Forum in Accra today, the Secretary General of the TUC, Dr. Yalba, said although the TUC acknowledged that COVID-19 and the Ukraine-Russia impasse had compounded these challenges, it was not right for the government to blame the age-long employment challenges on the two. The Minister of Information, Kujo Ponkroma, told Graphic Online that last year's growth rate of 5.4% was evidence that the economy was recovering from the pandemic faster than initially anticipated. He said government was now fast-tracking the implementation of strategic measures to build upon last year's growth and guide the economy out of the current challenges to the benefit of the citizens. Stronger collaboration with the private sector, prudent management of resources and the reduction in non-core spending are some of the initiatives being implemented by the government to restore the economy, he said. Mr. Nkrumah was speaking to Graphic Online's Maxwell Ladombila Akalari after data from the Ghana Statistical Service showed that economic growth for 2021 has beaten the forecast. Meanwhile, the government is assuring that there is a quicker turnaround in the economic fortunes of the country after data showed that the economy expanded at a faster rate than projected. It has therefore asked citizens to have faith in the government as it quickens the process to ease the challenges and return life back to the days before the onslaught of COVID-19. Problem I'm saying, why we are doing our money be a winning so a catria and yet. You pack a crab in a market yard. Yeah, I said, just a castle catria. I just a woman of which you know, say, a jet catria. The Padu Bonoa, the interior is on the set. The two are car. Not exchange rate. Not a swat. Not the old coach of Zoko Tabia. If you say, you know, you are a man, you are a man, you are a man. It is the same rate to say, yeah. Now, of course, the old coach of Tabia, they are fifteen. Inflation and the amount of a cost, a cost of a city to town, they are tomorrow, they are not better. And this idea we are back on and then you pray that they buy and then you COVID that they buy. They are just to say you pray in the COVID, you know, I'm a never assay more. But you never say that, and then I'm a Ghana, you see, I said, and you must say, and at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi today. The affected students who have had to defer their courses for non-payment of school fees have been given a new lifeline to settle their indebtedness by Monday. This is to enable them have their deferment reverted. This is following an intervention by the Students' Representative Council to help resolve the issues in relation to the students who were unable to meet the university's 70% payment plan and have received messages of deferral. The SRC has set aside 50,000 cities to assist needy students to pay their school fees to help save them from deferring their courses. Over 6,000 students were Tuesday informed that they were deferring their courses in line with the university regulations for non-payment of school fees as required under the fees credit and debt management policy. Out of that number, 
The SRC says over 2,380 are needy students who have been offered scholarship by the SRC, but their accounts are yet to be credited. Per the new arrangement, students who paid immediately after the deadline or after receiving messages of deferral, the 2,380 beneficiaries of the SRC bursary whose stipend meets the 70% threshold and any other student who received messages of deferment out of a technical hitch but had already paid can now pay the balance and the deferment will be reverted by next week. The SRC President Michael Abwa gave this explanation. We have about 2,380 students who are on scholarships by the SRC. We have 50,000 signed to assist people who are on the 767 benchmark, 50 benchmark to reach 70% threshold to meet the devastating feature of the policy. And so these 2,380 plus the applicants and beneficiaries of the 50,000 are part of the 6,000. So you can't exclusively say that these people have used their money for better. If one or two people sincerely come outside to say, oh, I want to apologize to my parents, I've used my money for so and so, it does not in a way generalize a conversation that they are not sincerely needy students who need philanthropists, the SRC, to be able to push in to help them to cross that benchmark. And that's what critically we've been looking at. And that's what we continue to engage to make sure that these students are safeguarded. We can't have the conversation that all of them have used their money for betting. They are needy students who don't even have temperatures to bet. So that's a question. The SRC has negotiated us yesterday to make sure that if you even pay us at today, you can get your status reverted. Secondly, the SRC have been able to negotiate that these people will have their money hit their accounts by Monday. Today, they are starting the first tranche of money is being disbursed to make sure these people are elevated from such situations. Tell me, another conversation that came up is that now you have to go through that long process of sending your receipts to the dean of students and having it rectified so that the deferral can be reverted. The SRC negotiated again on that very same day to make sure that you don't have to go through that process. Immediately, the money hits the investor's account. Your status is reverted. So we are in a window where students now have the advantage to pay and get into the system so that we can get all these people out of the situation. To some sad news, Congo, a community in the Nabdam district in the Upper East region, was Wednesday morning thrown into a state of mourning when a couple was electrocuted by an electric wire which they have been using as a drying line. Joseph Banike and his wife Mary died instantly after being electrocuted by the wire which served as a drying line within the veranda of the apartment. The wire, according to neighbors, reportedly came into contact with a live wire unknowing to the couple. It was the wife, Mary, who was first electrocuted and Joseph attempted to rescue her but also got electrocuted. Some neighbors told Graphic Online that Mary went out to draw water from a nearby borehole and was unfortunately caught by the wire as she was in the process of pouring the water in a reservoir. It appeared Mary was unaware that the wire they regularly used as a drying line was powered. When she fell down after the bucket touched the wire, Joseph, the husband who was also around at the time of the incident, quickly rushed to the scene to save her, but was also electrocuted in the process. The operationalization of the University of Media, Arts and Communication Studies, which is to help transform the Ghana Institute of Journalism, together with the National Film and Television Institute to a fully-fledged university is far advanced. The Ministry of Education has advanced the stages of constituting and inaugurating a governing council for the university to begin. The Deputy Minister of Education, Reverend John Fojo, said this today at the 15th Congregation of the Ghana Institute of Journalism. Reverend Fojo explained that a lot of work has been done and was hopeful that the governing council would be inaugurated this year. President Nanado Dankwa Kufuado signed the University of Media, Arts and Communications Bill 2020 into law, which merged GIJ and NAFTI into one university. A total of 858 students were conferred with Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies degrees in Journalism and Public Relations. The congregation at the forecourt of the North Jolu campus of the GIJ in Accra was briefly interrupted by the rains. On the part of government, we congratulate the school for having played a key role even in the establishment of the University of Media Arts and Communication. At the establishment of this university, GIJ is better positioned 
that better align even to accelerate the realization of your vision. So next year there will be another graduation. And by that time it would not be under GIG, but I'm happy to announce that it would be under the umbrella of the University of Media, Arts and Communication. And to wrap up with some sports news, the penalty he awarded Kumasi Asante Kotoko in the Ghana Premier League Week 24 game against Hazard Folk has been ruled as an error. As a result, the Ghana Association of Football, as a result, the Ghana Football Association has suspended referee Joseph Kenipadi. This was after the FA's match review panel ruled that the official erred in awarding the penalty in the 14th minute when Hearts player Nuruddin Abdulaziz won the ball in the 18-yard box from Fabio Gama, who then fell in the process. The Phobians protested the penalty which won the match for Kotoko and sent a complaint to the GFA. Upon assessment by the match review panel, the GFA announced on Wednesday that referee Paddy was inconsistent with his defense for awarding the penalty. The referee has insisted earlier that the Haas player stepped on the foot of the Kotoko player but later agreed that there was no stepping on the foot after watching the video. He then defended that there was a push and pull at a point. The video, however, did not show that. The panel therefore concluded that, per the video watched and the referee's defense in contrast, he erred in awarding the penalty. And since the error changed the outcome of the match, referee Joseph Kenipadi is suspended for the rest of the season. Fegel. Now Gama, beautiful play goes down. Etuga steps forward and Etuga scores. The Porcupine's up by 1 0. Easy. News in Brief was brought to you by Graphic News Plus. Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly, and annually. And access free news on various interest areas as well. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and protect yourself from COVID 19. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at GraphicGH. I am Enoch Odao Hinyafa, Frimpong.